but I'll still leave it up there. All right, so they want us to track to evaluate our point t equals four pi over three for sine, cosine, tangent, and then they also want us to do cosecant of t, which is one over y, secant of t, which is one over x, and cotangent, which is x over y, where y cannot equal zero, x cannot equal zero, and y cannot equal zero. All right. So the next thing we need to do, the first step, is to find where is this point 4 pi over 3. Uh, I told you guys in the last problem, this is the most important part. You have to determine where it is on the graph. And 4 pi over 3, remember what I like to do is if I know that this is, if here's my starting point, halfway around the circle is what we call pi radians, right? Pi, it ends up being pi radians. And so half. Um, so all the way around would be what we call 2 pi. So to do this, when I'm, I want to look at my denominator and say, all right, that's what I'd like to divide this into. Because if this is pi radians, I can say that's the same thing as 3 pi over 3. So let's break this up into thirds. When you're doing thirds, I like to eliminate this little line. It helps me break it up evenly into thirds. Just a little simple little trick that I like to do. Because there, I know that this point is pi over 3. This point is 2 pi over 3. So if this is 3 pi over 3, this one is 4 pi over 3, and this one is 5 pi over 3, and that becomes 6 pi over 3. 6 pi over 3 is the same thing as 2 pi. Does that make sense? Josh, Josh, does that make sense? Yeah. You guys probably need to pay attention to this because this is like really, really important. Paul, right? Paul. Okay. <laughs> so Paul, you didn't need that retake, right? Yeah. I didn't yeah. study for your retake. I know. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying I don't want to have to give a retake now because it's very important information. That's why I'm trying to give it to you now. So we don't have to worry about retakes in later in the future. Um, so <laughs> when looking at this problem, I obviously noticed that 4 pi over 3 is going to be this point right here. Right? Now the next thing we need to do is determine, well, what is the value of this point? Right? What is my x and y value for this point? Well, I first need to know, what is my value for pi over 3? I told you guys to, rem to remember pi over 6. You guys should have that memorized. And you should also have pi over 4 memorized. All right? You should have these absolutely memorized because once you have these memorized, you can find where the rest of them are uh, anywhere. So pi over 3 is, let's see, that's what? 1 half times radical 3 over 2, right? OK, so how do I know what this one is? Well, let's look about it this way, guys. If I take this point, 2 pi over 3 is just a reflection about the y-axis, meaning my x is now negative. So now this point would be negative 1 half radical 3 over 2. And then if I reflect that over my x-axis, now I have a negative 1 half and a negative radical 3 over 2. Does everybody see how I found that point? You don't need to memorize the whole unit circle. Just memorize one point and then use your reflections to where it is. Okay? So there's three points you guys need to memorize. Radical 2 over 2. Memorize those three points and then just use reflections for them. However, we're only using this point, so that's what you're going to do. So, therefore, there's my reflections. So, now the question says find sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So, sine of my angle, which is 4 pi over 3. So, remember, sine of t, if I want to evaluate my function, when I evaluate my function uh, for t, that's going to be my y value. So if I evaluate sine for 4 pi over 3, that's the y value of my point. The y value of my point is negative root 3 over 2. Cosine of 4 pi over 3 is my x value. Those are pretty simple, right? Not too bad. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So cosecant is going to be 1 over 
1 over y, which was negative radical 3 over 2. <coughs> Well, again, I can't have a fraction on my bottom, so I need to get rid of that. Yeah. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which would be 2 over negative radical 3 on the top and the bottom. That's 2 and 3, basically. When I have 2 and 3, basically. So therefore, I have um, negative 2 over radical 3. Now I need to rationalize the denominator. So I get a negative 2 radical 3 divided by 3. Yeah. That's for cosecant of... Well, what happens is this ended up being a positive 1, and then it's 1, one times a negative radical 3, so that's negative radical 3, but this becomes a positive. It, it doesn't, what I did, yes, I, I see what you're saying. I kind of changed where the negative sign was, but it, it doesn't matter if the negative sign is on top or bottom. It's still just the whole fraction is going to be negative. Uh, so it just becomes a negative 2 radical 3 over 3. Let's do secant is now 1 over x. So that's going to be, so secant of 4 pi over 3 is going to give you uh, 1 over negative 1 half multiplied by the reciprocal. Ends up equaling, that's just going to equal negative 2. All right. Then our favorite tangent is going to give you y over x. So I take my y, negative radical 3 over 2 divided by negative one-half, multiply by reciprocals. My twos will cancel out, as will my negative signs, so I'm just left with radical three. To do cotangent, I'm gonna have my x, it's my x over my y, so my x value is a negative. So cotangent of 4 pi over 3 is my x, which is a negative 1 half, divided by negative radical 3 over 2. And the most important point, guys, like I said, I know that's, this, a lot of this is math intensive. If you guys at least find your point, find the x and y coordinates of that point, and then at least set up your ratios of what it's supposed to look like, that's like 90% of the problem. You're done. You're there. All right? Here, it's just a little, you know, this is algebra mistakes if you're, if you're making there, but you guys should be able to do this. This is new. Find the points, and then set up the ratios, all right? And that's just knowing what your trig function ratios are. And then here, I have to multiply by the reciprocal, so it's going to be 2 over negative radical 3. That cancels out the 1. Those cancel out. I'm left with the 1 over radical 3. Rationalize my denominator. Radical 3 over 3. It's a lot of work, isn't it? So I only gave you guys two of them to try. Yes? Uh, are you going to leave that stuff out? The, 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 <coughs> for when? The fraction stuff for the quiz. Homework quiz or your regular quiz? Whatever you're taking. Today? Quiz, I guess, yeah. yeah, for your homework quiz, yeah, you guys can. I'll leave those up for you. You gave us number 23. Why did you give us number 19? Because number 19 has got only three of them, and number 23 has got all of them. Right. So just practice. Oh. You're going to do more practice today. Oh. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah.